your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. La, 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 hey, Mama, do you mind if I use your telephone? Since when do you ask my permission? Well, this is your telephone, Mama. I don't want to impose. Fine time to think of that. <laughs> yes, but this is the first time I've made a long-distance call on your phone. That's the least of my worries. Who are you telephoning? Oh, my, aren't you curious? Well, since it is my telephone. Aha, now it's your telephone. Well, since you're so interested, I thought I'd telephone the house in Eastbrook and ask Gertrude how the family is. You have my permission for that. Funny to think of the house sitting there without us in it. Must be so quiet. Nice here, too, though. Just the way it used to be with you, David, me. I. You, David, and quote, I, unquote, here in your apartment. It's almost as if we'd just gotten married. With a few modifications. Just a few Anyway, I think I'll call Gertrude. What time is it? Why don't you ask Gertrude? Waste my money on a long-distance call for that. What's the matter with your watch? It's on the mantel. Well, that's a fine place for it to be. Oh, 6.30. David ought to be home soon. Funny, you know, in a way, I still think of this apartment as home. Well, it was for a good many years. Nice years. I never expected any years to be nicer. And I met David. And hoodwinked him into marrying you. Poor David. I never thought everything could change in a year. It certainly has. Any minute now, it's going to change even more. First we were here, just you and me. I. Just you and quote, I, unquote. Then there was David. Now there'll be... What are you going to call him? Well, we're torn. We can't decide between Michael, Anthony, Peter, and Robert. That's quite a choice. I can't choose. I guess we'll just have to have four sons to make it easier. Your idea of easier is a little off-center. Then there'll be seven of us. Seven, that's a nice number to be. You better call Gertrude. David will be here, and you won't want to be talking on the phone. Oh, Mama, sometimes you're so intelligent. You must get it from me. And since you're so intelligent, you can answer a question for me. I can't uh, always answer your questions, but I refuse to take the blame for I've that. I've been thinking, where do you think David ought to stay while I'm at the hospital? I've been thinking of that, too. He hasn't said anything about it. He's probably planning to stay at his brother's. Think so? It's the most comfortable and convenient place for him. Mm, hardly is his brother. At bottom, they're very alike, too. Though David never married Julia, and Hartley did. Julia doesn't like dogs. I'll miss David, but Hartley is his family, and, well, he'll want to be with him. Well, I'll ask him as soon as he gets home, because I promised to let Julia know tonight. It's all settled. Now, get on with your phone call. Mm. I miss Bluff, don't you? Personally, I think it's rather nice to walk around without tripping over that dog of yours. I'm so glad you like him. Operator, do you please connect me with Eastbrook 527 Ring 3? Yes, I'll wait. It is strange calling myself up. I hope keep expecting me to answer my phone. Well, my number is Plaza 55744, four, operator. Your number? <laughs> you certainly make yourself at home. That's because I'm such a good hostess. Hello? Hello, Gertrude, this is me. Aye, Claudia, when will you learn? It's me, Mrs. Norton. Yes, I'm in New York. How is everything? How's the house? No trouble at all? Oh, why does everything go so smoothly when I'm not there? That is no doubt the reason. Hush up, Mama. Gertrude, I've called to find out how Bluff is. Is he eating well? Does he miss us? Oh, wait till I tell Mama. And how's Shakespeare, Gertrude? He did? Wait till I tell Mama. Oh, this phone call is going to cost a million dollars. Shakespeare climbed a tree this morning, Mama. The cat will play while the mice are away. And now, Gertrude, tell me how you are. It's about time. If I were Gertrude, I'd leave without giving her any notice. Hush up. How could I hear how Gertrude is? What did you say? Oh. Oh, dear. I'll bet you're sorry you asked. She took me seriously. She's really telling me. They always do. Oh, well, Gertrude, I... I... Yes, I see, but... Uh... Well, Gertrude, why don't you... Oh, is she? Is she sick? No, she's fine, she says. Yes, Gertrude, I... 
Everybody home? Claudia's on the telephone, David. It doesn't surprise me. Who's she talking to? To Gertrude. Be quiet, you two. I can't hear a word she's saying. Well, yes, Gertrude, how's I my mother-in-law me? tonight? Bearing up. And how's Claudia? I's fine. Oh, yes, Gertrude, I'm listening. What's Gertrude saying? Don't ask me. Mama. Mama, come over here. Mama, how is Claudia, really? She seems fine, David. Full of energy and questions. Nothing uh, different? Not a thing. How much longer do you think it'll be? I'm trying my best to get her to finish what she's saying. We're not talking about Gertrude. Go back to your phone call. Yes, Gertrude, I'm listening. Go on. There's no telling when it'll be, David. You know how babies are. They come when they please. Every time the phone rang down at the office today, I thought sure it was you calling me. Have patience. I'll make the phone ring with a very special ring when it's about your son. <laughs> I'll do that, Mother. Hey, you. Hey, what's going on on the telephone? Shh, David. Well, Gertrude, I'm certainly glad to hear that. Yes, we'll call you again, Gertrude, as soon as there's any news. Goodbye. Well, what'd she have to say? Not a thing. Not a thing? Not a word. Nothing's new. Everything's fine. What on earth was she talking about? I don't know. I was trying to listen to what you were whispering about to Mama. <laughs> you little eavesdropper. Didn't your mother teach you any manners? Not a one. Claudia was a very poor student. Mama was a very poor teacher. Well, here we are again. The three of us. Yeah. Sit down, David. Make yourself at home. The stew is stewing on the stove. Oh, David, you look tired. Mm, do I? Mm. Well, I had a fairly busy day down at the office today. You miss Eastbrook terribly? Eastbrook? No, not a bit. He puts up a brave front, doesn't he, Mama? Well, he may not miss Eastbrook, but I do. Mama is in love with our dog, David. Oh. Mama was able to have a little more privacy in Eastbrook. Eighty acres in Eastbrook and only four and a half rooms in New York. And, and that's something I wanted to talk to you about, Mr. Norton. What is that? When I go to the hospital. Which mm. will be any week now. Any week? Heaven help us. Knock wood, knock wood. Cross your fingers. Where are you going to go, David? Mm. To the nearest cigar store. Oh, you're not going to be the kind to hand out cigars, are you? No, why not? I thought you weren't going to be a typical father. There's no such thing as an untypical father. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's not what I meant. I meant, where are you going to live while I'm at the hospital? Yeah, we've plenty of time to think about that. How do you know we have plenty of time? I think we ought to discuss it now. All right, all right. Go, go right ahead. Discuss it. Well, now, Mom and I think that the most sensible place for you to stay is at Julia and Hartley's. Oh, you do. Mom and I have been discussing it. Oh, you have. Mom and I feel that the place for you at a time like this is with your brother. Oh, it is. David, haven't you got something more to say than that? Well, my future is being disposed of so eloquently. What more do I have to say? Well, don't you have an opinion? Yes, yes, I have an opinion. Well, it's a free country... Out with it. You mean it's a free country for husbands, too? Oh, Claudia you. tells me it's free for mothers <laughs> as well, but I've stopped believing that. We don't have it easy, do we, Mother? Anything <laughs> but. <You> too. <laughs> if I weren't so smart, I'd have an inferiority complex. Then go ahead. Have one. Nothing's stopping you. I would ignore that. David, listen, don't you honestly think you ought to stay at Julian Hartley? You really want to know? Why do you think I'm asking you? Sometimes I wonder. Julian Hartley, have plenty of room for you. You have a whole floor for yourself. What are you going to do with a whole floor, David? I'm going to pace up and down and up and down and up and down again. Seriously, David, they'd love to have you. I hope you haven't asked them. No, Julia asked me this afternoon. She said, quote, Claudia, we're expecting David, you know, unquote. Julia didn't ask. She told. It's a woman's world. They'd love to have you, David. Mm, that's nice. You have finger bowls at every meal. The butler will press your suits every morning. Hartley will give you his best brandy. And you'll have a private elevator to go up and down in. No. Yes, yes. I don't know how I've survived without it so long. I, I really well, don't. now that it's all settled, why don't you call up Julie and tell her? Because it isn't all settled. Since when? Since always. I have quite different plans for those ten days. I think I'll have a look at the lambs, too. You stay here, Mama. After all, when I'm not around, Dave, it's your responsibility. There's no rest for the weary. Do you want to hear my plans? Well, I'm... There's a certain rather beautiful woman I know that I'm extremely fond of. Oh? I had rather decided that it would be a good time for me to show that beautiful woman the town. Mama, listen to him. I thought I'd, I'd take her out to dinner. All the nice restaurants. Perhaps... 
Perhaps I might even take her to a nightclub. Well, it's more than you've ever done for me. And then let's see what else. If there's a if there's a good Mickey Mouse around, I'll even take her to the movies. Oh. If it's a sunny afternoon, I'd rather plan to wander over to the zoo. Take this friend of mine on a horse and buggy ride around the park, perhaps. I'm seething. Hmm, would be a rather nice ten days. Providing I didn't have to stay at Julia and Hartley's. Well, nobody says you have to. I just thought you'd like to. I, I was only thinking of you. Well, I appreciate that. Now, let me see. Um, what were some of the other plans I made? I'm not sure I want to hear any more. <laughs> you little goose. Sometimes I, I really think you aren't as bright as I think you are. He's not making any sense, Mama. Let him go on, Claudia. Maybe he's making a great deal of sense. Uh, you're wiser than your daughter, Mrs. Brown. I think you've guessed whom I consider the most beautiful woman in the world, uh, next to my wife. I don't want to be the one to say whom I think it is. Oh, David, you darling. I've known all along who you meant, because I've always thought, after me, Mama was the most beautiful woman, too. Then we're all of the same opinion. Mm. And both you, Mrs. Brown and Mrs. Norton, are very conceited wenches. <laughs> I think now I really better go look at the lambs, too. You're both fools, but nice fools. Oh, darling, I didn't want you to feel you had to stay here if, if you'd rather not. No place I'd rather stay. You two sound as if you're going to have the most wonderful time. Oh, we are. Not going to miss me at all? You? No, not at all. Sometimes I, I wish... You wish what? Nothing. Are you... Are you frightened, darling? Nope. Just jealous. I'm going to be all alone. You're going to have each other. Yes, Mama and I'll have each other, darling, but that's just going to make us feel all the more alone without you. Now. Now. Come on. Come over here. You forgot to kiss me. Hello. Mm -hmm. La, 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 la. If there's a youth center in your community, you'll notice that the very hub of all the fun is the Coke cooler. For Coca-Cola seems somehow to promote sociability. That's why young folks appreciate Coke at home. They like to be able to share it with their friends, just as you do. And since it's only a nickel a bottle, this is a pleasure few parents need deny their families. Suppose you order a case today. I'm a very flattered mother-in-law tonight, Mr. King. Well, Mrs. Brown, David means every word he says. And so do I. Oh, I never can say very much. Oh, you don't have to, Mrs. Brown. I'm a very lucky woman, Mr. King. Wait till tomorrow, Mrs. Brown. Tomorrow? What for? Well, tomorrow you'll take a walk with Claudia. Yes. But it'll be more than just a walk. It'll be a sort of reliving of the past few months, as seen through Claudia's eyes. I'm looking forward to that walk. Thank you for telling me. Till tomorrow, Mr. King. Till tomorrow, Mrs. Brown. As I was about to say... Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottled Coca-Cola. <laughs> <laughs>